Welcome back. Our special focus at this hour. After Narayan Murthy, the Ola CEO, Babish Agarwal, has now backed a 70-hour work week. This, of course, had sparked a raging debate a couple of months back when Narayan Murthy had said that youngsters must work for 70 hours a week. Well, the Ola CEO says that this is an attempt to improve productivity and sort out delays. In fact, something that Narayan Murthy had also said earlier, uh, Narayan Murthy had said exactly what Germans and Japanese did after World War II was to work for 70 hours a week. But on the show this evening, we focus on whether this is a reasonable proposition or not. Can youngsters actually be made to work for 70 hours a week? Uh, is this promoting the toxic hustle culture or is this the only way to ensure productivity? We'll have callers on the show and also a very special guest. But first, let's take a look at what the Ola CEO had to say. When publicly, jab, jab, uh, Mr. Murthy never bola tha, I was publicly in yeah. support and I got trolled on social media because of that. But wo, hamari generation ko tapasya karni padegi taki we can build the world class, uh, the number one country in the world we dream to build, right? Mm -hmm. Largest economy. And you know, also I don't think India's journey is just economic uh, resurgence. India's journey is economic uh, number one combined with a cultural renaissance. And when we request all of you to call in with your views, what do you think about uh, this contentious statement there by the Ola CEO? But joining me on the show this evening, Shantanu Rooch, founder and CEO of uh, uh, the Team Lease EdTech. Thanks very much, uh, Shantanu, for joining us. As a young CEO yourself, what do you make of these remarks? Would you encourage your employees to work for 70 hours a week? Uh, many would say this is promoting what's called, quote-unquote, toxic hustle culture. Yeah, so we have spoken about this earlier also, Vedanta. Yes. I mean, uh, we I, somehow I don't believe this is something that should be promoted a lot. That must be Bhavish's independent individual decision. But then I think the world has moved on from there on. I mean, India today is not growing just because we work many number of hours, but because we work harder, we are doing policy reforms, there are economic reforms, there's fiscal reforms, there are monetary reforms, infrastructure building manufacturing resurgence, all of these things are actually leading to India's growth, not just because some people are working harder or some people are working more number of hours today. That's an interesting point there because many have pointed out that, you know, this is against what we call work-life balance and that, you know, ultimately this is no way of ensuring productivity. Would you agree as somebody who works very closely with youngsters, yours is a, a new age startup as well, work-life balance seems to be very important for youngsters. Do you think that that's, uh, that's the way forward to ensure productivity? Because many would say that, you know, one has to uh, sort of uh, go on a holiday, one has to have a life beyond work uh, to actually come back refreshed. Yeah, so so actually COVID taught us that yes. and it's important that both medically, psychologically, everybody has told us and with so much of conviction that work-life balance is absolutely necessary for somebody to uh, ensure that their, their brains are refurbished, their bodies are re refurbished again to do the next course of work. So that's absolutely important. Now, uh, Bhavish thinks that the tapasya is important. I'm not too sure what he means by that. I think he means it more philosophically than anything else. But the work-life balance is absolutely important. COVID taught us that. And if you look at the work culture shift that happened after COVID all across the world, people have started talking about gig economy. People have started talking about work from home. And people have started talking about giving importance to their own personal health, personal family, everything else put together. I personally believe that this balancing all of these things is absolutely important to maintain productivity. What's just not important is number of hours that you spend in office or at workplace. But what's more important is what you do you do in those number of hours. So I think in my opinion, work-life balance is absolutely important, not just philosophically, but also medically. Otherwise, you yes. land up into all these other challenges. And, you know, uh, what's your mantra for productivity? As somebody who heads a, uh, you know, a young startup, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of youngsters who work with you. What is your mantra for ensuring productivity? Two things. Uh, one is, uh, I've, been, I've been talking to my employees all the time, but two things which are important to ensure employee productivity. One is to ensure they're absolutely rightly skilled and continuously skilled and continuously upskilled to manage the vagaries and uncertainties of the business organizations today. Number one. Number two is to ensure that if somebody possesses the skills, they're also motivated to work. Just because I'm skilled, I may not just be uh, you know, uh, wanting to work today because I don't like my manager, the way I'm treated. All of these things are softer issues. So it's important that 
a person is rightly skilled so that it, he has the uh, he has the ability to work hard and become productive. Second is to ensure that he works in the right, right. work culture. To Shantur, ensure that Shantur, stay on with us. I'm being joined by a caller at this time. Utkarsh Raghu is joining us from Chennai. Utkarsh, go ahead and tell us what you do and your opinion on what uh, the Ola CEO said. Yeah, I am a professional engineer. I also run an industry. So my take on this is this, must, this is industry specific as to the number of working hours. And number two is why don't we reduce the number of government holidays you know, on a pan-India basis? Mm. Different states have different set of holidays. I think we must have minimum minimal number of holidays across India. And number three is what is the productivity that that the person can offer by working 70 hours a day? Is it really necessary? I think this needs a very uh, you know human resource kind of approach and. Uh, you know, I think uh, we must work on that rather than simply saying uh, across the board, yes, we must uh, put in 70 hours of work. For example, I, my employee works about six hours in a day, but I get a productivity of 12 hours and I'm mm -hmm. quite happy about it. So you're of the opinion, Utkash, that, you know, 70 hours, uh, working for 70 hours a week actually hampers productivity and, you know, government holidays must, must also be re-looked at and there has to be a humane approach. That's an interesting point there. Captain Jagpal from Rotak is also with us. Go ahead, Captain Jagpal, and tell us your, your opinion. Good, good evening to you. I had an opportunity to give this opinion on uh, Narayan Murthy also. Hmm. I'm 80, 80 year old. Decorated soldier has the opportunity to command largest unit. You see, you, you, you may, working for eight hours is more than adequate for, by an Indian uh, worker. Our army man fought two world wars with a basic pay of 18 rupees. Our uh, minimum wages are the lowest. Or oh, these two, what, what these two individuals are saying is, have no fundamental rights, have no freedom, and uh, let them make money. Right. Sir, it was really an honor to uh, to have you on the show and as, as somebody, as you said, who has commanded a battalion, you really don't pitch for uh, 70 hours a week because it hampers productivity. Thanks very much, sir, for being with us. Uh, Ravi is also joining us from Hyderabad. Ravi, go ahead and tell us your opinion on what uh, Bhavish Agarwal, the o Ola CEO, said. Go ahead, Mr. Ravi. Oh, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear, yeah. Okay, great. See, uh, so, basically, if you look at the you know, economies like US and Europe, they are mostly driven by consumer market, right? So, for to have a consumer market, you need to have a balanced society. You know, people purchasing products, creating a demand, you know, and creating value by the companies, so that people buy the interesting products. So when you put uh, 70 hour work week, you are saying don't buy anything, sit in the office. You should not have life, anything other than the work. And so that will eventually kill the, you know, the internal demand of the country and uh, which eventually kill the companies. See here, the synergy is to have a consumer market where people use the products of the companies. Mm. If, company, if company says, I want to have people work 70 hours, so let us say, hypothetically, everybody sits in the office 70 hours. Then where is the future of the country, right? So I think uh, uh, it's a wrong idea. What we have to do is create value, be innovative. And working 70 hours is not a problem or a solution. The solution is to create value and that is what yes. we are seeing in India. That's my opinion. That's a very interesting point there, Ravi. As you say that it will ultimately lead to burnout if one works for 70 hours a week and the focus should be on creating value. That's an interesting point there. In fact, Rebecca is now joining us uh, uh, from Mumbai. Rebecca, tell us how many hours do you work for and what is your opinion on what, uh, you know, on this raging debate around a 70 hour work week? Hi, so um, thank you for, here for uh, having me online. I honestly, I work for 45 hours. That's the regular standard 45 hours that we do, which is almost nine hours per week, uh, nine hours per day. Um, 
my thing is like if you want me to work for 7 hours are you going to compensate me are you going to pay me according to that or are you going to still pay me what you are hmm. i also want to know if i'm going to work 90 hours i mean 70 hours a day uh, what is the time that i'm actually going to give my family what is the time i'm going to devote to my family that's a very interesting point there because if you you know the the onus really is also on uh, you know the person at the helm whether whether you're going to be compensated for the extra hours you put in that's also a very important uh, point you are making because you know a, as somebody from this generation we realize what our worth is so you know you have to be adequately compensated is what you're saying if you put in those extra hours rebecca Yes, I'm here. So also besides that, I mean, I want to know whether the CEOs, whether the people who are actually pitching this idea, whether they are also going to be putting in those many hours of yes. work. We, I mean, putting in those many hours because if you want to lead by example, you actually have to do it first. You cannot expect your employees to be doing something when you are not actually doing it yourself. So I think they should start working those many hours in office and doing that before kind of trying to tell their employees to do it. So interesting. There, you've turned the tables on these CEOs making those, uh, uh, you know, uh, claims of a 70-hour work week that they must lead by example, and they should also put in those extra hours. Very interesting. There, uh, Venkat Rama Reddy from Bengaluru is also uh, joining us uh, on the phone line. So go ahead, Mr. Rama Reddy, and tell us your opinion. Good evening, sir. Uh, my opinion is against the views of the CEOs of Ola and Infosys. I think it's a ridiculous statement made by these CEOs. I've been listening to the earlier uh, person as well and their views, and I think I totally align with that. You know, when if you start working seventy hours a week, when are you supposed to give time to your wife, your children, their education, and leave about personal life? What What about society? I mean, today's society, we need to give back more time back to the society to develop a sense of uh, feeling and belonging in the society, which is totally missing today. And working in an air-conditioned room for 70 hours, I think it's a pure greed. Uh, uh, I think we need to stop this, and we need to look at a collective development of the nation, which is beyond kind of GDP growth. You know, Bhutan uh, doesn't have a GDP based on money; they have ba based on happiness. And you know we need to be start thinking on that. And I think the Indian philosophy, irrespective of what religion we come from, has always been pitching for this uh, this one. Self actualization is what we need more. So that's my view, sir, <laughs> to start with. <laughs> All right, very interesting there, uh, Mr. Ram Reddy. Uh, thanks very much for joining us with that. In fact, Sarvana Perumal is also uh, joining us from Chennai. Go ahead, Mr. Perumal, and tell us what do you think of this uh, uh, this raging debate around a 70-hour work week. Mr. Perumal, if you can hear hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going. Yeah. Go good ahead. evening. Good evening. Good evening. See, this uh, 70 hours work style uh, is one of the good things that uh, uh, corporate side or on the company side it will give an effective output, productivity, and things. But on the other side, like if you see what is the kind of a you know, like uh, recreation or the kind of uh, stress relief activities that the uh, corporate is going to give for the employees, that they have to look into it. So I've been in the field of uh, HR and uh, uh, research on that. So the basically, like, you have to under... So how do we balance these things? Mm. Well, primarily important. Simply saying that 70 hours work and burdening mm. with another, another extra two hours will not uh, fit into the... Uh, style of working, the work-life balance. So, okay. so they need to they need to strike a balance on how do they they are going to relieve the stress of these workers, and as well as uh, give the right compensation or whatever it is. That's my point. All right, uh, Mr. Perumal, thanks very much for joining us with that. Uh, in fact, so Shantanu, you know, the sense seems to be that work-life balance is sacrosanct, and one must not sort of. Uh, uh, play play around, uh, you know, or play with that uh, that idea of work life balance that is extremely important. But two of the callers made very interesting points that one has to be compensated for the extra hours you put in. So you know, it's a generation that realizes its worth. You are not going to put in those extra hours for nothing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, she was right when she asked for it, that in yes. case if I'm working for so many hours extra, are you going to pay me extra for it? I'm not too sure that, I mean, that's a choice that she's making, that there could be some employees who are willing to put in extra amount of hours and want to earn that extra buck, but you can't make it standard for everyone. I mean, it should be left to choice. There are gig workers that I'm aware of who actually work for many number of hours, but did not not everybody works for so many hours. Not everybody works for every day so many hours. It's a choice left on me. So making a standard is absolutely not sustainable. There are companies and there are countries who have tried this in the past. They said that I'll make it a four days week. And that means that people will work for close to about 11 hours per day, making it 44, 45 hours. That actually did not work. Many companies, most companies did not move into that direction. I, I think it's... it's but it's but Shantra, as somebody on the other side of the spectrum, as a boss or as somebody at the helm, it's, it's always a tempting idea, you know, for a boss to have employees that put in those extra hours, uh, you know, and that they, they, who don't demand any sort of compensation in that sense. You know, it's, it's always, it always makes you more employable, let's say, if you are willing to go that extra mile. It, it, it will be a more amateurish and short term view in, term, in case okay. an entrepreneur is looking at that. I think if you're building a company for the longer term, you need to build a culture in which people thrive and people love to work in that organization. If that culture is very important and you can't be sure short term looking for just for your benefit. I mean, it will not go anywhere. I think it's important to make a culture where everybody thrives. There's people love their work. And if you don't care about the people, they don't care about you either. Yes, so so it's essentially not sustainable uh, to make it mandatory, you know, at something like a 70-hour work week. But, you know, one of the callers also mentioned something interesting that it's about creating value, which is why you have more and more of these startups talking about things like performance with purpose, you know, how to give your employees uh, something more purposeful, something that drives them, something that motivates to, to show up for work every day. That's that's absolutely true. And if you look at today's generation, that's that's a great renaissance that I'm seeing. I mean, a lot of people who come to me for a job interview today. Uh, I mean, I come from a company called Team Shantra, Lease. And I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt you there. I'll come back to you. Shama Datta from Ahmedabad is joining us. Shama, go ahead and, you know, chime into this discussion. What do you feel about the 70 hour work week proposition? Yes, I think they are striking the wrong note. We need to go in for quality, not quantity of work. The basic fault is we are looking at it from a wrong angle. We need to educate our youth. The basic roots should be good. Once that level of, you know, out of the box thinking and good working and commitment to your job, when your profession becomes your pleasure, that time the productivity increases. And that's my view. I do not believe in lot of time and too much of work stress. I believe in quality, not quantity. So the focus must be on creativity and innovation and not looking so much at how to sort of make your employees hustle. Shama, that's what you're saying. And not only that, it starts from the grassroots, from the school level, from internship, not at job level. Okay, interesting there. Shama, thanks very much for joining us. Shantanu, go ahead and complete your point. Yeah, so I was just, just uh, making a point that I come from a company called Team Lease and uh, uh, we are known to be in one of India's largest hiring company. We have been hiring one person every five minutes for the last 10 years. So which means that we must have taken so many interviews and of late there's a there's a trend that we are noticing that youngsters, the, this generation actually wants to work for purposeful work. They're, they're, when they come to me for an interview, they actually ask us and what does the company stand for? Why do you exist? What's your purpose? What's your reason for existence? Why do you have a reason for succeeding? Right? What's your sole purpose of winning? So that's the thing. And they want to actually contribute to companies and organizations where they believe that they're doing something really worthy enough, which they'll be proud of one day, giving back, giving back to the society, working for the environment, working for the distressed, working for somebody who's needy, I think is becoming uh, I think I, we are seeing this consciousness among these youngsters these days, which is a great thing to observe, actually. That's right. So interesting there. In fact, many of them look for a long term vision. You know, what is the vision of a startup? What is the vision of a company? And that really matters to them. In fact, uh, you know, I know a lot of people who switch jobs because it sort of hampers their work life balance. And that's something that is extremely important to, you know, to today's generation. 
absolutely correct i mean they they want to work for purposeful work they want to yeah. work and if you put, if you have this mandate of a 70 hour week you actually uh, you you're actually risking uh, you, you know losing your employees as well given the fact absolutely. that there are so many opportunities available these days that uh, if a company does not offer work life balance uh, an employee may quit the job yeah, I mean, employees can see that today. It actually breaks the fabric of trust between the employer and the employee. I mean, it's not sustainable for the longer term. They can see that you're only bothered about yourself, not bothered about the team that you're trying to create. And the team actually matters the most in a company in itself. I mean, uh, your com customers will be happy only when your employees are happy because you don't take care of our customers, your employees do. I'll so have to interrupt you there. Uh, Santosh, Srimu from Hyderabad uh, is joining us uh, on the phone line. Srimu, go ahead. Ah, yes, sir. But uh, it, you, I have seen the news that it is a punishment or to yes. absolutely punishment. Though, because 40 hours a week or so, it, is a, like it brings a lot of health issues and family problems. Even when we work for nine hours a day, so we are getting uh, back pain and some, uh, and, uh, some obesity and uh, sugar. Because so many, it brings a lot, a lot of health issues. But seven hours, 70 hours a week it is uh, unbearable. Mm. So... Even if you increase like 5 hours, 50 hours, okay, then manageable. But 70 hours is not manageable. Anyway. So it's in a sense detrimental to your health also is what you're saying. You know, one can not manage 70 hours a week. Srimu? Yes, that's correct. Right. Shantanu, would you like to come in on this? That it's not just about work-life balance and it's not just about having a balanced life, but it's also detrimental to the employee's health, as many would that's say. That's true. That's absolutely true because there are medical evidences to say that uh, this type of excessive working, excessive long working hours can actually lead to several issues right from, uh, you know, clinical depression to type 2 diabetes to heart problems, coronary issues, and ultimately has actually led to, uh, I mean, led doctors to believe that it has actually led to fatalities. I mean, this, right. it's, it's serious as that. Absolutely. Manik Paul is also with us from Mumbai. Manik Paul, go ahead and tell us your view. Namaskar. What I have to say that uh, the 70 hour work, is that just the attendance for 70 hours or work for 70 hours? That's very important to me. Hmm. You want somebody to sit there for 70 hours or you want somebody to work there for 70 hours? Why? My primary reason of calling is to tell you guys why do we work? Okay. Do you realize that we work to run our family? And if you are spending 10 hours in the office, one hour going, one hour coming, 12 hours. And eight hours you sleep, four hours you left with the family if somebody is around. This okay. is absolutely dumb when we have millions of people looking for work. That's a very make interesting some target. I want you to make some target. See, we have this target. You have completed. Go home. And if we cannot complete, sit for 10 hours. That's okay with me. So intelligent and fast working people will get rewarded and slow working will have to work for 10 hours. That is the way to think positively. So people, all these people will be benefited. I am smart. I can do things for five, in, uh, six hours, and so I go home, fix the target, fix the target, daily target. Hmm. Okay, that's so th that's interesting there, whether th these CEOs and these bosses want to make you sit in the office for uh, 70 hours a week or do they actually want to, want you to work? Uh, so that's an interesting point there. Nagesh is also joining us from Bengaluru. Nagesh, tell us, what do you think of this raging debate? Yeah, I have, uh, I've worked for uh, nearly 25 years in a corporate uh, environment. Uh, see, you should not make any fixed uh, hours of minimum of 70 hours. That is not okay because, you know, given the liberty, we always have worked for uh, more than the stipulated hours of eight hours or nine and a half hours. See, I'm in Bangalore. It is not only working, you know, we have, after coming back home, we take uh, online calls, we take calls coming from United States and so forth. So, uh, you know, if you restrict uh, saying that we have to work for 70 hours, there are lopsided effects on our family, 
there is going to be an effect on our health and uh, many things you know even we cannot have the time to learn to provide quality work this kind of a fixed hours is something give, getting into a rigid pattern so we want to contribute qualitatively contribute bring content than you know putting something like a minimum of six, uh, 70 hours is not at all okay in a city like bangalore it is not only we work there we spend literally around three hours on travel itself. Yes. So my experience has been that this view is a very lopsided view, not good for the country. On the other side, we are going to have a lot of other social issues. Okay, very interesting there. Uh, Shantanu, would you like to come in on this? That a company also must uh, factor in, you know, the the travel hours. Uh, especially in in cities like Bengaluru and Mumbai, with the kind of nightmarish traffic, you know those hours also need to be factored in. So, so here, Vedant, there are two things that I'd like to add to here. One is um, uh, somebody spoke, uh, Mr. Paul spoke about the goal-based, outcome-based work rather than number of hours being spent in office. So if you look at, there are two different types of work. One is the blue collars and the second is the white collars. The blue collar workers, uh, actually the punch in time and the punch out time is one, one thing that Bhavish is talking about today. But for the white collar workers like you and me, for example, look at today's because of automation, digitalization and the mobile phone on our hands, most employees are connected all the time today, right? right? I'm not too sure whether you're counting all of these together. It's productivity which matters yes, but, more but than... Shadni, you must not put me in the same bracket because for journalists, you know, 70 hours a week is all, you know, many times it's the norm rather than the exception. But Sriram from Hyderabad is also live with us on the phone line. Sriram, go ahead. Yeah, good evening. My name is Sriram. I'm an also an ex-serviceman. I, I also do the social activism. Hmm. I could see, I could see the human being or used like the so-called allied CEOs or whatever the corporate world, like a Goena fix. You know, you know the, how much the social problems are taking place. They are not even bothered. The woman's fertility rate has come down. The, the male fertility rate has come down. They are only interested in making, you know, making the human as a materialistic person. India does not. India has a different values. A lot many things are there. Absolutely it is taken out. And we have no connection with this earth at all. We just think that humans are, you know, only for the material we have taken the birth. It's really shocking what type of ed academic education they are holding it. Right. Right. Interesting there. Shantanu, would you like to come in on that? Uh, I'm not too sure whether... Uh, you know, we agreed with the, that one. Each to each of their own. I think we have to figure this out. Uh, people have to actually bother about what suits them rather than somebody is materialistic, somebody is not. Uh, for us, what is important is to ensure that we keep our, maintain our health as much as our work. Yes. Uh, and work-life balance, all of these things are very, very important, going to be very important. Now. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Shantu, for being with us throughout. Very interesting voices there. Many of, saying, many of them saying that this is against a healthy lifestyle, against work-life balance. But again, this has brought uh, back uh, in focus that raging debate around work-life balance. That's all the time that we have on the show, but news continues on the top of the hour.